Thank you for joining the first in a series of troubleshooting or config videos that we're going to do. In this video, we're going to talk about some basic troubleshooting scenarios. Uh, we're going to go through device connectivity issues, authentication issues, and we'll discuss the difference between enable and no enable mode uh, templates. So before we get on with troubleshooting steps, it's important to know what good looks like uh, when we connect to a device and download the configuration from it. So uh, let's go ahead and get logged in and look at some examples of uh, troubleshooting when uh, connectivity is good. So go ahead and get logged into our config, head over to our device management page, and you can see we have a number of devices set up here already. So we're going to use these particular examples. Uh, our router one telnet no enable, router one telnet with enable, and router one uh, SSH no enable. And I have router one SSH enable mode deliberately uh, not assigned, so we'll we can add that manually later. So what's important is we get our device ID, and we're going to do this from the command prompt. So you're going to learn a command, and we're going to uh, implement that command with the debug switch. So our device ID is what's important here. So run over to the CLI on your server. CD into the, let's look at what directory we're in here. Fire www HTML. We're going to CD into uh, our config 5. And then have a quick look in here. And we need to get into the current directory. So CD into current. OK. Now, the command is PHP artisan which is a Laravel framework command. And then I'm just going to hit enter and we look at the full list of commands available to us. These are all the or config commands that are available to us. The one we're interested in particularly is the download device command. Okay, so we're going to do PHP artisan, or config download device. We're going to put in our device ID, which is number seven, just double checking, number seven. And I'm going to do a minus D for debug. So let's see the output. Hit enter. And you can see that it retrieved the full configuration. OK, so if I just scroll back up here, touch, I'm going to show you a few things. So you can see do, do, do. it connected to the device, sent over the credentials. And at this point, started running commands. So it ran the terminal link zero command, ran the show clock, retrieved the output, ran the show clock. Uh, you see duplicates in the debug. Don't worry too much about that. Um, as long as you see the output you're expecting, that's what's important. So show version was the second command. And uh, you can see the show version output for this particular Cisco router. And if I scroll down, we can see the show run. OK, so and then we get the full show run for this particular device all the way down. Again, don't worry about the duplicate. In fact, this you, you see duplicate output. And we get right down to the end of the config, OK? At which point it restores term length uh, 40 paging. And then you get your uh, R config. Uh, output for verification that the command was run successfully. In this case, three commands were run against the switch. Let's do this with uh, an SSH device, so ID9. Let's run the exact same command. Just clear the console here. I'm going to change this to 9, OK? And have a look at the difference with SSH. So the SSH output looks a lot more cryptic which it's supposed to be. Um, but you can actually interpret the plain text that is returned from the configuration. What's important here, a couple of things are important. One is we do see an authentication and session values coming back. So we know we've authenticated into the device. We start to see commands being run. Uh, so terminal end zero. And then you start to see the actual show commands being sent to the device, so show clock. And if you read carefully, you can interpret the characters that are sent over uh, and in which direction uh, they're sent uh, by the SSH session. You can see the show version 
and then the full output you know if you read carefully you can interpret the show version output in the uh, ssh debug uh, data that's sent back and similarly for the show run and um, so if i just go right back down at the bottom very similar output to telnet in that we see our config reporting that these three commands were run successfully and that's the end of that configuration okay so now that we know what good looks like let's see let's try and troubleshoot a connectivity issue to a device and see what that output actually looks like so head back to our console took a quick break in the video and added this particular uh, device router 2 which has an ip address of 1.1.1.1 which our our config server cannot reach and even if it could um there's no SSH or Telnet enabled on this device. So device ID 10. Okay, so again, we're going to run our PHP. Let me clear the console. We're going to run our PHP artisan command and change the device ID to 10. Well, let's, let's quickly have a look at the output this time. So the length of time it takes for our config to return output here depends on your timeout value in the template. Um, in this case uh, return pretty quick um and it said no config data return for router 2 id 10 check your logs for more information let's quickly go back to the user interface and have a look at the logs for under settings okay and very simply it says unable to connect to 1.1.1.1 device id 10 okay so that's clearly a connectivity issue um if I ping 1.1.1.1, hopefully it doesn't work. Ah, it does. Of course it does. It's live on the internet, right? But you, you know, it should illustrate a point. Uh, yeah. Okay. Ping 1.1.1. Of course it's reachable. But the point is, is if the device is not reachable, either you know maybe port 22 is shut down, or port 23 isn't available, or you misconfigure a device, then you're going to see that um, uh, unable to connect to. Uh, error for either telnet or ssh devices so the next uh, thing that we'd want to troubleshoot is an authentication issue so we've already tested that we can connect to and download configuration files from uh, router one telnet no enable which is id7 okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to change the credentials on this to fake an authentication issue and uh, we're going to monitor the output from the cli so we're going to run in here change the password enter some random text doesn't really matter as long as the password is incorrect that's fine we're going to edit it and that's we don't want to save that that's okay so now we have incorrect credentials for uh, device id 7 head back to our console clear make sure we're in the same directory that's fine var html or config five and current and then same command again uh, php artisan or config colon download device change it to id7 keep that minus d switch there because we want to see a full verbose output hit enter ah so this is for telnet right and what's important is that you see the username and password prompt then it hangs so we're not getting back the main device prompt which our config expects and you should have configured i'll just go to device settings on the device settings page this particular prompt here okay so that's important and eventually it'll time out you know again based on the timeout value in the template uh, in this case i believe it's 60 seconds um you can double check with the default for this particular template is 60 seconds after that duration it will uh, time out So fast forward in the video a little bit, looking at the final output here, we see our config has alerted that downloads for these particular commands have failed. And that's due to the authentication issue where, you know, we passed over the wrong username and password. So you need to always check your username and password. When we jump back to the user interface here and look in settings and logs, we can see those same alerts, but we can also see uh, the errors authentication failed for this IP address, uh, ID7, 
or wrong prompt configured for this device. We'll talk about prompts um, in a few moments, but for now, you know, just know that this kind of dual alert um, acknowledges that you either have incorrect credentials or you've got the wrong prompt configured for this device. So head back into uh, router one ID seven, get into the device settings. Let's change that password back to the correct one. Hit save, head back to the CLI, run the command again, and you can see we get Okay, this time we'll try the same scenario, faking the credential, faulty credentials, and this time we'll do it on a device configured for SSH. So into router ID 8, change those credentials, save an invalid password, and let's get back to the CLI and, uh, sorry, for uh, ID 9, and let's run the debug command and let's see what happens. Now, uh, we get an immediate prompt, uh, alert, I should say, back from the device stating that there was an authentication or connection issue with this particular device. The reason is, is SSH is a negotiated protocol and uh, Telnet, you know, we expect streams of characters. So there tends to be a delay with Telnet, uh, with the alerting, it's not so uh, straightforward, but with SSH, you get that immediate feedback. It's always wise to test from the or config CLI using Telnet or SSH commands direct to the device to make sure you can connect to them there's no firewall issues and that you're using names and passwords as so a final troubleshooting example the today we're going to look at uh, if a device is misconfigured for enable versus no enable mode um those in the cisco community would be familiar familiar with that terminology it might translate to uh, something else depending on the type of device but essentially you know when you're jumping from one prompt uh, less privileged prompt to a uh, more privilege prompt on the device you like. So for this, we're going to use um, device ID 8, router 1, telnet no enable. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to flip this one and change the template. So currently it's set for an enable template, which means that it will log in, see it, an enable mode prompt, this one, and then attempt to type the command enable, which should bring it to this prompt and may require further authentication, which is the enable password. So we're going to deliberately misconfigure it. We're going to set it for no enable, and we're going to run our debug and see what happens. So save this, go back to our command line, and PHP Artisan, I'll just use our history, change. Uh, so PHP Artisan or config colon download hyphen device. I'm going to change this device ID 8, hit enter, see what happens. Okay, so jump forward a little bit on the video to save some time. So the 60 second timeout kicked in. And the reason for that is with the no enable mode template, or config expected this main prompt. However, if you actually tell that to the router yourself, you'll see that we got this prompt first, which or config didn't expect, it expected this prompt. Um, so it waited for uh, this character stream to come back at it. Uh, it didn't, so it timed out after 60 seconds and essentially failed. So we can see that right here. Um, config downloaded for these and, and it failed. Now, you go back to our config, hit the settings, go to logs, for, and you can check the logs for this particular device. And we'll see right here, um, authentication failed for this device, this ID, you know, or wrong prompt configured. So this log is a, is a bit of a double whammy in that it could be either authentication failed or the wrong prompt configured. You gotta check both things. You gotta make sure your authentication is correct. You gotta make sure your prompts are configured. So if I run back to devices, change the template for this one back to enable mode, the enable mode template, click save, run back to my CLI, run it again, and we should get perfect the full configuration sent right back to us and all was successful. So I hope that gives you a high level approach to troubleshooting device connectivity in Arc config v5. Some of these principles do apply to v3, um, but the commands are completely different. Um, we'll get a little bit deeper into templates and how to, how to build and troubleshoot templates. Uh, in a future episode, we'll look at um, issues around, you know, where partial configs are downloaded and how to troubleshoot those in both Telnet and SSH. Uh, 
we'll do a dedicated session on prompts um, and how you how you set up and configure and troubleshoot prompts and uh, we'll do some further issue uh, troubleshooting episodes on, on different issues as they arise with customers so thanks for joining um see you again the next time